All right, what's up college football fans, quarterback fans, welcome to another QB Spotlight video. In today's video, we are going to be previewing the, the quarterback play and the keys that Texas A&M quarterback Max Johnson needs to do against Alabama's defense and Alabama's quarterback Jalen Milrow, what he needs to do in his keys against the A&M Aggie defense. So before we get into it, QB Spotlight, we're just a big quarterback hub. If this is your first time tuning in, sincerely, thank you. We do quarterback content on a weekly basis. We have these game previews uh, as, as well as game kind of recaps as well. Again, we keep everything related to the quarterback position and so we try to keep on that topic so with that said let's talk max johnson first let's talk about what the anum quarterback needs to do to have success against this this alabama defense we're going to you know briefly preview the alabama defense as well to kind of give us some context uh, of what he needs to do to have success so with Max Johnson, the good thing is he's got plenty of experience, one, playing in the SEC, playing meaningful games, and playing Alabama. He actually almost beat Alabama in 2021, I believe. They lost 2014, and they were you know, heavy, heavy underdogs. He actually played pretty well against them, so he's got plenty of experience against his Alabama defense. Even though it's been a few years, not the same defense, of course, but he still has the experience playing in a big game like this. So let's talk Bama's defense. And Bama's defense is really, really good, right? Like, you, you probably probably evidence probably obvious but i think they're like really good this year uh they've had a ton of pressures on the quarterback they have 18 total sacks and you're going to find out the a &M defense and the bama defense are actually pretty similar again we'll get to bama's defense or alabama's or a &M's defense later but bama's defense has 18 total sacks 98 total pressures pressures as being you know hurries uh, sacks anything related to that to, to getting some pressure they have 18 or 98 total pressures which is probably even bigger than the sacks but the fact they've been able to get to the quarterback and sack the quarterback that's led to some interceptions as well they had six total interceptions they had three against will rogers last week so they've been able to cause some havoc and that's led to to some turnovers from the quarterback quarterback position right so they they, they played will rogers boom three sack three interceptions against him last week before that Jackson Dart at Ole Miss he had a pick and you know it's kind of you know I made some plays he did but but that Alabama defense kept Ole Miss in check they gave up like 10 points and then we saw what Ole Miss's offense did against LSU this past weekend so it even makes that defense even more in, in, impressive right so again I think this Alabama defense is going to be pretty pretty stout so what are the keys for Max Johnson what what does he need to do to have success to to, to keep out to keep you know aim them in the game in the fourth quarter to have the potential to to win I think it's only what they like a three point underdog three and a half point underdog depending on on when we're watching this video but let, 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 let's talk Johnson let's talk the keys I think the keys are actually gonna be similar to Jalen Milrow which we'll get to in a little bit but let's go over the first key and I think it's obvious and I usually don't like doing these obvious keys I usually like having them a bit more specific you can say what I'm about to say about any quarterback but I think it's really really um, relatable and important in this game I think that's no interceptions like I said it's obvious but I think it's even it's even more important in this game against Alabama if you don't have any interceptions and you're Max Johnson you're probably going to be in a pretty good position in the fourth quarter you don't want to give Bama any other chances uh, you want to rely on your defense maybe forcing some some turnovers or having some big plays on their side you don't want to be the quarterback giving up those big plays right so I think number one again it's easy it's cliche it's something I usually usually don't like to to, to do or stress avoid interceptions no interceptions from Max Johnson number two and something that he's done really really good so far and I think he's gonna have to continue to do it to have success and to beat and to beat uh, Alabama is distribute the ball all over the field. That's exactly what he's done so far. Now, it's been limited time. He's only had a game and a half, essentially, right? Last week was his first game starting this year against Arkansas. Then he played, you know, half the game or so uh, the, the week prior against Auburn. And this is what I really like about Pertuner's offense. You don't just attack middle of the field. You don't just attack outside the numbers. You attack the whole field. So it forces the defense to have to, de have to defend the entire field, right? And that's that's something that Johnson's been able to do just in his limited time passing. He has 219 yards passing outside the numbers and 217 yards passing inside the numbers. So basically even, which is really, really impressive to have. So I think if you're Johnson, you want to continue that. You want to force Alabama to defend the entire field. And he's been able to do that so far. He's been able to do that against Arkansas, and he was able to do that against Auburn. So first cue, no interceptions. So not, not cue, first key. Sorry, first key, no interceptions. That's obvious, right? Second key, distribute the ball all over the field like he's been doing. And third key, probably the most important one, he's going to have to make some really, really good throws, some really tough throws. Now, he has the ability to do that. We saw some really good throws against Arkansas last week. He was able to process information quickly, able to make good decisions, and make some throws into some tight windows. So it's going to be more than just dinking and dunking. We saw some good throws in the middle of the field. We actually previewed that that throw that he had against Arkansas in the middle of the field uh, in one of our older videos. He's going to, have to make throws like that. He's going to make some deep throws, hitting some deep throws. 
Uh, yeah, I think he's going to have to do the exact same that he did against Arkansas. Those are the exact type of throws against Bama to win. And we saw Quinn Ewers make some really impressive throws against Alabama's defense. Like, Quinn Ewers had a really good game. Really good game. Bama made that really tough on Ewers, right? If you just looked at the box score, you'd be like, oh, Quinn diced him up. And, and, and yeah, he, he did. But those are some really clutch, some really kind of small window, known for error type throws that Quinn made to have that success in Alabama's defense. And so I think Max Johnson's going to have to have the exact same type of game uh, as far as throwing the ball in the tight windows and small spaces to beat Alabama. So real quick, just to kind of overview the, the, the thoughts and the take on Max Johnson, the obvious one, no interceptions. I hate that I put that down, but I still think it's prevalent in this game. Number two, distribute the ball all over the field like you've done, like Petrino's offense calls for, inside the numbers, outside the numbers. Number three, make some tough throws and some really, really tight windows, some really small windows. Uh, you have the ability to do it, but I think you have to do it consistently and repeatedly. Uh, but I think a has got a really, really good shot of all these keys kind of come and play for Max Johnson. If you're an a fan, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you're a Bama fan, let us know as, as well what what your thoughts are for Max Johnson. So with that said, let's go on with Jalen Milrow. Let's talk about his keys. Let's talk about what he needs to do to have success and you know what he needs to do to continue to to improve and, and play against this AM defense, who I think is actually pretty good. Um, so let's talk AM defense first, and we'll talk about the keys for Jalen Miller. It's going to be somewhat similar to, to Max Johnson, but some differences as well, just being different quarterbacks. So besides the Miami game for AM, their defense has been stout. Like the difference has been really, really good. Tyler Van Dyke, Dyke had an NFL type game against you know AM's defense, which of course helps. But that was just a besides that game, they've they've played excellent. Now they had a, you know, they haven't played the toughest schedule as of yet but they looked really good against arkansas and what they've done so far even against lower competition they've dominated they have 27 sacks which i don't know if that's number one in the ncaa or sec but it's got to be up there right they have 27 sacks uh they don't have as much like total hurries maybe as or total pressure as as bama does but when you get to the quarterback as much when you get 27 sacks you don't necessarily need to have all that pressure consistently, right? They had seven sacks against Arkansas last week. So they had a lot of success against a dual threat type quarterback, which you're seeing in Jalen Miller. They had a lot of success against KJ Jefferson last week. They're only giving up 150-ish yards passing per game. Uh, and like we said, they had they shut down the dual threat quarterback, KJ Jefferson. He had like negative three yards rushing, a lot of state, seven sacks on him. And they also did a really, really good job against Auburn's quarterbacks who aren't great passing right now but you know you saw what they did against Georgia and they had some success on the ground and AM was able to, to to limit that so a really good AM defense coming up against Alabama and John Milrow so what are the keys what does he need to do to have success against against this uh, A&M defense. I think number one, I hate to use it, but it's the exact same key as Max Johnson. And, and if you're watching just the Alabama part, I hate putting these obvious keys because you can say this about any quarterback in any game. But I think it's really like it's really prevalent with Max Johnson. I think it's really, really prevalent here and, and really uh, true against A&M's defense for Jalen Miller. No interceptions. Like we said, it seems obvious. I hate even putting this here, but if you don't throw any picks, like some of the the picks he's thrown, you know, in the in the end zone against Ole Miss, obviously the the, the big interceptions against Texas. If you limit those, like you're probably gonna be in a really really good position to 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 win the ball game in the fourth quarter if you can just play a bit more consistent at times. Because like we've said, we're big Jalen Miller fans here. Uh, if you've watched this this channel before, like he he has so much potential. He's shown flashes of it. I think he's getting some time to develop. I mean, if you're a quarterback, you need to be exposed to that. So. The first key, no interceptions. Aggies only have two interceptions on the season so far, so take that with a grain of salt, but you got that going for you. All right, number two. Number two key, find ways to improve against the Blitz. All three of his interceptions that Miller has thrown this year so far have been against the Blitz. So whether that's getting the ball out quick, whether that's some more screens, the short game here and there, just find ways to have success against the Blitz, and it's okay to take a sack, right? And that leads to key number three, using your legs that's a, that's an obvious one if you if you you know watch Alabama football and Jan Miller use your legs to, to escape pressure but also use your legs as part of the scheme you know, a defense has had really has done a really good job against quarterbacks that that can run some dual threat guys but if you're Jan Miller I mean you're the one of the best if not the best athlete on the field all the time you, you may be the best overall athlete at the quarterback position um, in college football so use your legs that's obvious but use your legs he can hurt any defense with his legs let him the pass rush and and hopefully use your legs as opposed to forcing a throw and forcing a pick all right and then another one which i think is a or another key 
last key essentially for Jalen Milrow and something he's been really, really good at. He's been excellent on his deep throws. On balls of 20 yards, of, of balls thrown more than 20 yards in the air downfield, he's 11 of 17, 402 yards, and five touchdowns. Been really, really good on the explosive plays. Uh, he has, I think, I think he has six passing touchdowns. Correct me if I'm wrong. I apologize. I think he has six passing touchdowns, and five of those six passing touchdowns have been in those big explosive plays. So he's been excellent on those throws. So what AM is probably going to do, but they're, well, they're going to try to take that away, of course, right? So they're going to try to take that away. So if you're Jalen Milrow, as opposed to forcing those deep throws, which I think can be there down the down the road in the game, but don't force those deep throws. Take what the defense gives you, hit on some shorter to mid-range type throws that eventually will lead to a deep throw, right? So you, you have these, these, these A&M DBs who know, okay, he's got a big arm. He's done really good pushing the ball downfield on these big explosive plays let's limit that and let's force him to just do short to medium type throws so if you're Miller you're like cool no problem time for me to just hit on these short medium type throws force the defense to creep up force the DBs to creep up then you take your deep shots uh, once you hit consistently on the short to medium type throws right again Everything I just said is much easier said than done, and I, there's a thousand different keys out there that I didn't talk about. You know, uh, we're just talking about the keys as it relates to the quarterback position. But if you're, you know, yeah. yeah. So with that said, real quick, just to, just to, just to take away, so this is overall takeaways for Miller Rowe. I think using your legs, that's obvious. Use it to your advantage. Uh, you got to hit on some explosive plays, sure, but hit on those short to medium type throws first that can lead to explosive plays. Improve against the blitz. Don't force anything and just don't turn the ball over and you're going to be in a good position. I think if he just it, it continues to be consistent in the pass game, if he continues to improve and work on the consistency, they can be in a really good position as a team, but right now against A&M. So with that said, if you're an Aggie fan or, or an Alabama fan and, and you watch you know, both clips, let us know in the comments below what your thoughts are. What do you think the keys are for Johnson? What are the keys for Jalen Milrow? What are the keys for the defenses? Anything, even if it's not related to the quarterback position, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And again, if it's your first time tuning in, thanks for watching. Please share, like, subscribe. It really does help. But yeah, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And uh, we will see y'all next time. Share, like, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff.